Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing all of you how to render videos inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So the main area for exporting videos is the Deliver tab, which you can find in the bottom right hand section. But before we get to that, if you just need a super quick way to export on the Cut page specifically, you won't find this on the Edit page as of yet, but Quick Export is right up here in the top right hand corner. So if you click on Quick Export, you're going to see four options here. The first is H.264. When you just need a video file, this can be a go to option. So you're going to see resolution that matches your timeline settings. And we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, the frames per second, also the same thing. The video codec H.264. And this is going to export to a dot move video file by default. So if you're OK with dot move, then this can basically just give you a quick way to export. All you would need to do is hit the export button, choose a location on your computer, hit save, and it will immediately start rendering after that. If you don't want to export to a .move video file, maybe you want an MP4 or a different video format or some other settings you want to change about it, then don't worry. The full render settings can be found in the Deliver tab. We'll get to that in a bit. But right here, I want to point out three other options at the top. So YouTube, Vimeo, and Twitter. Basically, it's going to export with the same settings you see up here, but you can use the Manage Account button to sign into those platforms so that when you actually export your video, it can upload to those platforms immediately so you don't have to manually take the video file and upload it yourself. So that can be one option if that appeals to you. And also these kind of exports where you upload immediately to a platform, they can be found as well. If you go to the top left menu, DaVinci Resolve, and then go down to Preferences, you'll find these settings for logging in or signing out under internet accounts, and that is on the system tab. So you can sign into these, authenticate with the platforms, and then as long as you keep signed into these internet accounts, Resolve can upload directly to those platforms. So now let's go over to the Deliver tab to talk about the rest of your render options. So on the Deliver page, we should see a similar setup on the render settings over here. By default, it's gonna have those same quick export settings. So you're looking at a quicktime.move video file as the export. If you want to change that, just click on this drop down menu. MP4 is another really common format, has lots of compatibility, and uh, you can usually upload it to just about anywhere. But dot move is also pretty good. And then you'll see the resolution and the frame rate. So if you don't already know about setting the timeline resolution and frame rate, you can find those settings in file. And then you go down to project settings and you can see the timeline resolution up here, the timeline frame rate down here and the playback frame rate as well. Usually these two are just going to match each other. One really important thing to note here, though, is that the timeline frame rate is grayed out because our timeline exists and already has video information in it. So once you've been editing on your timeline and it has a bunch of edited clips, you can no longer change the timeline frame rate. So this is a setting you actually want to customize before you start adding clips. So just keep that in mind when you are editing your videos, because note that when you come back in here to render your video out, you may no longer have the option to change the frame rate here. So if we edit it in 25 frames per second, it looks like we're stuck with 25 frames per second. So there are some other settings which can be relevant. If you typed subtitles for your video, you can export them down here by checking that and then choosing if you want it to be exported as a separate file that you need to include to actually show the subtitles or if you want to burn them into the video itself, which means it's no longer separated from the video. It's part of the video and shows on screen. For a lot of people, though, that's not going to be necessary. If you upload a video to YouTube in English, you're already going to get automated captions anyway, so it may not even be necessary. OK, so aside from these custom settings, if you need to limit the data rate of your video for size reasons, then you can take the quality down here and restrict it to a lower number. Basically, the lower you set this, the smaller the video size is going to be, but also it may eat away at the quality of your video export if you set it too low. So just be aware of that. Usually these days, I'll just leave it as automatic best. Now we can see up at the top here that there's also other presets for exporting videos. For instance, we can click on YouTube over here, which is going to have the formats MP4 or QuickTime for .move video files. And if you're logged in, you can upload directly to YouTube by checking this box, setting a title or description, whether you want it public or private. I would recommend that you upload initially in private so that you can go in there, edit the settings like the title, the description, the tags, thumbnail of the video, all of that stuff before you actually publish it. So that's probably why it defaults to private here. Otherwise, pretty similar here. Same story with Vimeo and Twitter. 
And if we scroll further to the right over here, there's also some other presets that I don't use particularly often. Uh, audio only as one option over here if you just want to extract the audio from your video. And it's worth noting, though, that when you do customize your settings down here, you can save a preset by going to these three dots in the top right hand corner here. So you make your changes, you save as a new preset, and then in the future, you can just use that as the base for one of your video exports. OK, so when you actually want to take your timeline and export the video, Assuming you've made all your changes down here, you would just hit add to render queue. If we look at the middle bottom section here, we can see it says render and out range. Uh, by default, this usually will say render entire timeline, um, which is what you want if you just want to take everything you've edited and put it into one video file. So render and out range is actually going to render only port render in out range is actually going to render only part of your timeline. In this case, I think we'd get the same result because we can see our in out points by looking at the timeline. So we have our in here, the gray bar going between the in and out points and then the out point at the far end. So this actually covers our entire timeline right now. But if we want to be sure, we should always put it in entire timeline just to be on the safe side. So if you want to render the entire timeline as one video, you would add it to the render queue with render entire timeline. Choose the location and a name for your video, hit save, and you should see a job queue up in this render queue here. So this is actually a render queue in the top right because in Resolve, you can queue up multiple jobs basically to have a list of videos you want to export. So you add multiple jobs to the list and then you can select them all at once and tell it to render. So you can render two jobs or you can render everything in this list by hitting render all. So in the top right hand corner, we're going to see that this section is called render queue, which means that we have a list of jobs or video files that we want to export, but haven't been exported yet. Uh, tasks for resolve to export. So right now we only have one job, but you can actually take multiple timelines, queue up a bunch of video files as jobs, and then you'll have a list of videos to render out here. So you can select them all and hit render all if you queue up more than one job. In many cases, though, you'll just be rendering your one single video, so you won't need to worry about that. If you're at the point now where you're just taking your timeline and want to render that out, then just select it and hit render all and you're good to go. However, if you want to take your timeline into multiple sections, one way you can do that is by switching from render mode down here to an out range. Set in out ranges for each of the video files you want to export. So for instance, I can go here at the first frame, hit I to set an end point. Um, let's go 16 seconds here, hit O to set an out point. And now when I add this to the render queue, it's going to just be between these two points. So I can add that to the render queue here. Um, and then this is going to be just like part one. I might want to rename it here. And now with this timeline, I can hit I again to set another in out point. I can go over here and we can add our part two render. Note that if I was actually going to render each of these out, uh, we do want them to have different file names. So be sure about that. If you're going to queue up multiple jobs in the same area, you might want to just put like an underscore two or part two, whatever you need. And we can just take the rest of our timeline and just add a third job here. So this time I'll do untitled underscore part three. So if I want to correct the other parts, I can uh, remove those jobs from the queue. I'm going to click X here a couple times. Let's go back here. I'll set O for an out point, I for an endpoint. Let's rename it in the top left to part two, add to render queue, O to set the out point, I to set the endpoint, and we'll do part one over here. So we add those to the render queue. They all have different names. And then that will work out a lot better if we want to actually publish these. So now when you want to render an entire queue, we can left click on the first job up here. I'm going to hold shift down and click as far down as we want to render. So if I click on job four, it's going to select all the jobs. Another way you can do it if you want to select them individually is to left click on your first job you want to render, hold control down and then left click on any other jobs you want to render as well. So in this way, we skip job two and we just go straight to uh, job one and job three. You can see the number of videos that it's going to render with this render two button there. Alternatively, just select them all however you want to do it. So here I'm just dragging a box, left click hold and bring the box up to select all the jobs and then you can render all. So I'll just go ahead and hit render here. And now we're going to get all of the video files rendered out. I'll just go ahead and hit stop after this first one. So these other three jobs failed because I canceled it. So if for any reason your job fails, you can always reselect them in the queue in here. 
So I'll just select these three and then you can hit render three to make sure that those actually get properly exported. Then just go ahead and check your video file location. You should be able to open it and make sure it rendered properly. So that is pretty much going to be it for what you need to know about how to render videos inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I will see all of you in my future video content.